Good morning. In this video, I'm going to deal with another video by Jack Smack 77 And this video is trying to explain <coughs> why he can pick out people who are saved and unsaved. Mostly. He has, it's an interesting title because one negates one from the other. One word negates the other. Uh, he's got the title here. Let's see, bring this up here. The truly saved don't or shouldn't, parentheses, later reject eternal security. Well, either they don't, which means they won't, or shouldn't means they could. Shouldn't means they could, even though they shouldn't do it. So shouldn't gives a possibility. Don't, uh, uh, when the save, uh, the truly save, he's got don't means they won't do it. It won't happen. This is why he can pick out people. He's got one guy who says he believes in a work salvation, who believes in eternal security, which, you know, it's nonsense. But the, uh, the whole, even, even his headline, his, uh, 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 the, uh, the channel title negates one another. The shouldn't negates the don't. This is why this guy goes around picking out people. You, know, you, have, you have to believe in eternal security. He, he puts up eternal security higher than the, uh, <clears throat> the, uh, uh, the gospel itself. This is what the, the, uh, uh, the crossless gospel people do. And the, uh, he also miss, uh, mentions uh, 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 Yankee Arnold in here, who has re totally rejected the crossless gospel. And which Jack Smack argued against me when I said, oh, no, Yan uh, Yankee went against the crossless gospel and he made a video on it, attacking it, saying the gospel has to have content. And he came back and said, oh, no, you, don't, you know what you're talking about. Now, Yankee Arnold is against the crossless gospel. He doesn't see, believe you can be saved by a promise of eternal life. But uh, he goes into this and tries to explain that... Uh, uh, He's going to give some reasons why he believes uh, anybody who rejects eternal security is lost. But he's already negated the idea. Because you can reject eternal security when you want to believe it, like any heresy, right? uh, uh, the idea that you've gone to a heresy, you thought you've gone to apostasy, you've rejected it. And therefore, you might not have, you know, uh, uh, you might have believed it one time, just like the gospel. You might have believed the gospel one time, which, you know, uh, Jack Smack is saying includes uh, the issue of eternal security. Okay, but if you can if you can fall away from the true gospel, you can fall, certainly fall from, away from the knowledge of the uh, of, a, the, of, a, of eternal life. And uh, if you look here, and he makes the idea of how illogical it is, okay, they would never do that. They would never do that. But look at the uh, Galatians three. Oh, foolish Galatians, foolish! Who hath bewitched you that you should not obey you, that you should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth crucified among you. These are saved people in Galatians that were getting heresy come back, coming after them that they had to be like uh, live like the Jews. Uh, this only what I uh, learn of you. We see either by the spirit, by the works of the law, or by the bearing of faith. Are you so foolish, having begun in the spirit? Are you now made perfect? By the, flesh, by the flesh. And that's the whole idea. The law tries to make the flesh perfect. Uh, when the law is misconceived. These guys were coming out of a, a, a Judaizing system. Uh, you know, uh, where they didn't understand. And that's what Romans 10 is talking about. They were, they were coming out of a system. That the issue was always faith. The law was to lead you to faith. These people had grown up in the, on the, on the idea. They were saved. But then you understand about the Christian walk and the idea that uh, you have to walk by faith and the issue of two natures and the, and the Holy Spirit uh, uh, guiding you and, and being filled with the, filled with the Spirit uh, and not grieving or quenching the Spirit. If you grieve and quench the Spirit, you, you're open for any heresy. So th this, this is Jack Smack being desperate. This is Jack, Jack Smack being desperate. Because his whole thing is, if somebody doesn't believe in eternal security, they must not have been, never been saved. But his whole, own heading negates that. His own heading negates that. The truly saved don't or shouldn't. Well, yeah, they shouldn't. But they can. It might happen. 
And he has a thing he talks about, well, and he, that's when we put the Yan Yankee Arnold. The reason I'm not giving the whole video because I'm having a problem with my, uh, uh, my video. Uh, the, uh, I'm getting a lot of spinning. The reason he, he, you know, he said they won't change overnight. I don't know. He, you know it doesn't mean that they, just because you see the change uh, on them uh, uh, in one day doesn't mean Satan wasn't working on them for a long time. Just like these, you know, these guys came in Galatia. But uh, let me see if he, I can get this thing going. With the, he gives four reasons why. Because they're an absolute idiot. So I've got some reasons here why I believe these people claim they used to believe in eternal security, but now they don't. Now keep in mind, I've never met a person who was actually saved that said this. And see? How does he know? How does he know? See, he's already defined the idea that if you, if someone comes up and says doesn't believe in security, and therefore he, uh, they shouldn't, you know, they should believe in eternal security. Now he's saying, I've never met a person who was saved who rejected eternal security. That would mean there's very few Christians out there who believe in eternal security. Very few. Because there are verses that appear, they don't rightly divide, and the verses that appear to go against eternal security that these people yank out of context, and that for, that's why it's very difficult uh, to teach eternal security. You got to first get, get people rooted and grounded in the verses that do teach eternal security so they can be prepared for when these people come in and uh, start pulling these other verses out of context. I've been a bunch of liars, so my first reason why people say they used to believe in eternal security, but now they reject it, is because they're just lying, out and out lying. They don't want to be condemned by us, and in all reality, that's their only hope, is that they used to believe in eternal security. Now, they well, their only hope, of course, is that they were saved. <laughs> they had the gospel and they were saved. But what they believe now, just like if they, they once believed the true gospel... That they once believed the true gospel is irrelevant to the fact of what they believe at this point in time. That's the issue of heresy. You go into heresy, and the fact of the matter is, as a heretic, you can you can stop believing all kinds of weird stuff. I don't even think it counts now. But if these people are saved, it, it was because they used to believe it, and that's the only reason they're saved. Yeah. Okay, that's the only reason they're saved because they used to believe it. So it makes you think they're lost. I believe they're lying. You believe they're lying. Well, that's their testimony. That's all we can say. That's all you can say. You can say they lost their testimony. We can think a person is lost, but we can't be 100% sure. But two, maybe they just gave lip service to this doctrine. Maybe. We don't know. Once saved, always saved. Maybe they were part of a church that was Baptist, and they just were taught, yeah, once you're saved, you're always saved, and they never gave it a second thought. They never actually analyzed this subject and studied the scriptures to see if this was actually true. They just went by somebody's word, and it was all just vain talk. Okay, number three. Oh, the fact of the matter is what happens, someone comes in there and shows them the passages that appear to contradict eternal security. And they, people try to get them into a work system. That's the Armenians. That's the street preachers out there. You know, they're always making this issue of how you're living. That's the whole issue of worship salvation from both sides, the Calvinist side and the Armenian side. The, Arme the, uh, the Armenian side is the idea that you can lose your salvation. The Calvinistic side is that you never had your salvation. You never was saved in the first place. So that's the two major wings of evangelical Christianity. Very few people teach a once saved, always saved, because they're terrified of it. They may have believed in a false eternal security. That would be the eternal security taught by Calvinism. It's a false security because it's not based on the blood of Jesus and the finished work of Christ. It's still based on us, continuing to the end. And number four, they might... Well, no, that's not true. The Calvinists be perseverance of the saints and that God will bring the person back because God is not controlling the whole lives. See, Jack Smack is all fouled up. 
The perseverance of the saints is the fact that you have two lip. God is, is, is controlling a person's life. He's the one that saves you by giving you the faith, not giving the faith to someone else. And then perseverance of the saints is the fact that you might elapse into some type of apostasy, but God will eventually bring you back and therefore uh, you'll bear fruit. The one save always saves you is that we, there's a sin unto death where you can reject God by even to the point of death. They might have believed in eternal security, but they believed the false gospel. Okay, They believed in a works-based gospel, but yeah, they still thought that they would never lose their salvation. I mean, believe it or not, the unsaved Todd Friel claims he believes in eternal security. But it's a false gospel, though. He doesn't have the right way. I don't know how you reconcile the two, so it's kind of weird. A weird reconciliation there, uh, believing in a works gospel. Because the idea of works is the idea is you've got to constantly prove, show that you're saved. Uh, but the Armenian system, the uh, system that Wesley had, it was a very extreme case that you lose your salvation. I think Arminius had the most extreme. The idea is that you, you know, a Christian would never. Uh, the one and only way you could lose your salvation is if you, you actually came up and rejected Christ, and uh, so it was very. Uh, and Arminius was very kind of shaky on that issue. But uh, uh, again, this comes back to trying to show. The worship of salvation, trying to get the idea that, get that assurance of salvation and proving it to the rest of the world by your works, by what you do. But the point is, he can't, he can't tell who's, no, he can't tell who's saved, not saved. They're lying, they're not lying. Who's saved, not saved. Heresy means you go into, you reject the truth of the word of God. You go, you go into apostasy. Way of salvation, so... It's all just useless words. So that's what I believe. Once a person is truly saved, they have the Holy Spirit indwelling them. The Holy Spirit does not teach salvific loss. So if a person believes that, they're getting their information from another spirit or from a false prophet, or maybe it's just the way their mind works because it's still unregenerate. Maybe, maybe not. Because you can grieve or quench the Holy Spirit. Yeah. If you fill up the Spirit... You're not going to get into heresy. That's the whole point of the heresies of people among you uh, in Galatians. When you list among the, in, in uh, Galatians five, list all the heresies. I mean, list all the, uh, the the sins. Yeah, heresies is among uh, is among that list. Uh, now, the works of the flesh are manif uh, manifest, which are these: adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness. Idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, and uh, seditions. Heresies. Heresies. Galatians 5.20. Envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. Now, what does a person once saved, always saved, says? A Christian can do any of that stuff. A Christian can do any of that. And what we, we look at and say, well, I don't think that, you know, the guy gives a testimony. I don't know if that guy's saved. You kind of, you know, <laughs> that's hard to believe. But doesn't mean you you can't know for sure. See, that makes sense to the unregenerate person. Yeah, I believe you can lose your salvation. That makes sense. Yeah, it does make sense. If you're in a heresy. If you quench the Holy Spirit and grieve the Holy Spirit, because that's what the flesh would tell you. Because now you start identifying yourself the way an unregenerate man would do, based on your standards and that God's standards. But that doesn't mean a Christian can't do that and that's why in his heading here he has to put in shouldn't a christian shouldn't believe that but they do i believe you have to have the works you have to obey christ to be saved that, that all makes sense to me okay yeah but, if you're in flesh it does see a problem with jack's back see his confusion doesn't make any sense if you're actually saved because the Bible says we're saved by grace. It doesn't make any sense. That's why you have in Galatians 3. He calls them, oh, foolish Galatians. No one said it makes sense, Jack. Heresies don't make sense. The flesh doesn't make sense. It's irrational. It's irrational. It destroys 
It destroys you. It's not rational. Doesn't make sense. Doesn't make sense to reject the gospel. <laughs> Talking about apart from anything we do, and anyone who's honest about themselves knows that they're a sinner. They have nothing to offer God. Nothing of any value. If they're honest with themselves, they wouldn't be living in the flesh. But when you're living in the flesh, you're not honest with yourself. You're full of every sin, every capability that an unbeliever does, you do. You're basically in that state of carnality. And therefore, in that state of carnality, if you stay in that if you stay in that state of carnality long enough, 2 Peter 1 says, you can actually forget you were saved. And all we have is filthy rags at best. So now, half this video, he goes through trying to justify or explain you know, John Security. No one's arguing against John Security, at least you know, from our side, free graces. But this guy wants to be able to pick out people who aren't saved because they reject eternal security. And that was the issue of the book of Galatians. And Paul says that, oh foolish Galatians. They were leaving. Paul, they were taught by Paul. They were taught by Paul, and then the, these Judaizers, uh, these, these Jews who said, oh, well, that was the issue of you know, Acts 15. People were getting saved, and they said, well, you got to go do this Jewish stuff. When the issue was, uh, no, you don't do that stuff. You don't do, stuff, do that stuff. Because they, they, were, they were fouled up in their dispensations. You know, the idea of getting circumcised and stuff. But the fact of the matter is, is that people are following up Paul, coming behind Paul, and Paul is teaching totally grace and saying, well, the law is, you know, is the law was always meant to lead you to Christ. It was never meant as a basis of salvation. Therefore, the faith works garbage. It's just that garbage in the Old Testament. The law was always meant to lead you to salvation. And that's what it did in the Old Testament as well, is, is uh, the pointing out in the New Testament. That's why these faith work guys go, like, oh, no, you, you got to be, uh, they had a first faith work system. Therefore, you know, they, they could lose their salvation. That's what they teach in the faith work system. That they could lose their salvation and that they continue to set works and do their things. So that's what Breaker teaches. That's what Gene Kim teaches. All these guys teach that. Uh, that the uh, there was no eternal, eternal security in the Old Testament, which is a lie. The, the, their work system was to show their faith, and they had eternal security based on a different methodology. Of course, that person has trusted in Jesus Christ alone. They know they're going to heaven, and they know nothing can change that, because he that believeth on the Son... They know that when they're in the, in, in the filled with the Spirit. ...and half everlasting life. He that hath the Son hath life. You can't lose the life when God gives you eternal life. He doesn't take it back. He's not an Indian giver. He doesn't renege, and you can't lose something that's eternal. Yeah. You believe that when you're filled with the Spirit. But people come behind and start teaching you false doctrine and shake your faith. So, I don't believe that these people were actually saved. Because well, he doesn't care what you believe. No matter what you believe. You don't know. That's why you say you have shouldn't in there. You don't know if they're saved or not. That's the point. As these people deep-seatedly and wholeheartedly believe that they have a temporary life, if salvific loss were true... It doesn't matter. Because they're in the flesh. It doesn't matter what they believe in the flesh. If they're saved, they have two natures, and they've gone back to the flesh, and now they, now they believe all kinds of weird stuff. You don't know what they was the, the issue. The issue is whether once saved, and they've got, when, when it was saved, God gave them two natures. And carnality is the issue of going back into the, into the flesh. And once you're back in the flesh, you're capable of anything. That's what once saved, always saved teaches, Jack. Then that's all you can have. That's all you can wish for or hope for is a short-lived salvation, not an eternal salvation. So because these people have a temporary life, that means they don't have the same salvation as the saints. And they don't have the same God. See, it's not just logical. The, uh, that not believing in eternal security is not logical. No one disagrees with that. But no heresy is logical. That's why. That's one. The issue thing on this channel is to point out hypocrisies. Because when you look at heresies, you'll see inconsistencies and and uh, contradictions, like for Jack's Max seventy seven. 
That's why he can pick out people. He doesn't believe in Tony Skrull. He doesn't believe in Tony Skrull. He, he, and he already said he, he has one guy who does not believe in Tony Skrull. He's a works guy. So he doesn't know who's saved, not saved. And then he says, well, I believe this. I believe that. No one cares what you believe. So that's why I believe they were never saved. And they're currently on their way to hell right now. See? And he's trying to justify him picking out people who are saved or lost. And why would they even dispute this? Because if, according to their system, hypothetically or subjunctively, you subjunctively. could still go to hell. See, see what? Subjunctively. He gave a subjunctive, which shouldn't. A subjunctive means possible. It's possible. Oh. If you did the X, Y, and Z, or whatever they say you have to do, to be spiritually disinherited from the body of Christ. So, technically, these people really can't say that they're not going to hell. When there's a very well, they might not be able to say it. And, but neither can we. Neither can we. You know, all these people who preach against eternal security think, think they're not going to hell. They're the ones who think they, their works are good enough. You know, all these street preachers out there, they pick up a few sins out. And, and then say, well, and they go for sinless perfection. And the idea of sinless perfection is that they didn't commit a sin uh, knowingly. See, they have ways to skate around that. So they're, they're, they're okay with God. But if you commit cer certain sins, you're not, you're not okay with God. Great possibility that these people will end up in hell, according to them. Because great possibility. A great possibility. You see, he contradicts himself. And he can't even see his own contradictions. There's a great possibility. Yeah, we don't know. The point is, we don't know who's saved and not saved. We don't know who's saved and what not saved. And Jack Smack's just throwing everybody out who rejects eternal security. That's why he picks out these people. When he can't know for sure they, they once believed in eternal security. If they believed the true gospel at one time, now, he says that includes eternal security. Let's, say, let's grant them that point. They, you know, they once believed in eternal security. That includes the gospel. But then they put a work system in there, which means they reject the gospel. They put a work system in there. And they go so far that 2 Peter 2, 1, that God that can actually forget. They were actually cleansed from the old sins. But they lost their salvation. But according to reality, it's because they never had true salvation to begin with. You don't know that. You don't know that. See, now he jumps, makes this jump. Paul says, Demas loved the world. You think Demas would have been hanging around the apostles if he wasn't saved? Now, we don't know what he believed on particular theological issues. But he went back to the world. Never heard from him again. That's all I have. Let me go ahead and close and prove. So, let me stop here. This is Jack's Mac nonsense. As I said, one of the purposes of this ministry when I first started was not only to pass on literature and uh, understanding of these doctrinal issues, but to point out errors and, and, and contradictions in these heretics. And that's what Jack Smack 77 is, a heretic. He doesn't understand what he, he, he's supposed to be teaching. He teaches the two natures. He teaches carnality. And what do you think carnality is? You either grieve the Holy Spirit or you're quenching the Holy Spirit. And once they've always saved teaches you can quench the Holy Spirit even to the point of the sin unto death. There's a sin unto death. And his argument is, well, I'm going to be rational. Be, no, of course it's not rational. Sin is not rational. Heresy is not rational. Jack Smack 77 isn't rational. He can't say he has to put the, they don't. See, if, if, if the don't were true, then yeah, you could pick out people. Every person who doesn't believe in eternal security is lost. But when you put the shouldn't in there, that changes the whole game. That changes the whole game. Because now, yeah, they shouldn't, but they might. And he can't even see his own contradictions. He can't even see how fouled up he is. So all you can say, yeah, their testimony is shot. No question about it. No question about it. If you go out there and preach a false gospel, 
I'd say, if they believe that gospel to get saved, they're lost. If they believe the gospel that they're pushing and preaching on this issue, they're lost. No question about it. But that's a big if. Is it a likely if? Yeah, it's likely. It's likely that they believe that false gospel of preaching. But it's not, it's not necessary. It's not, it's not, to, you don't, you can't be actually sure that at one time they had gotten the true gospel, believed the true gospel, and now in, in the, uh, had gone backwards, had gone into, uh, into a, a system where they they reject the very things that they, they believed in. And that's why a once save, always save guy which Jack Smack claims to be, will never make absolute statements on someone being saved, not saved. They can say, we can say we think they're not saved. And that's legitimate. But people reading the Old Testament would have never thought a lot was saved. People reading the Old Testament say, that guy had to be lost. Look what he did. Look what he did. Never said anyway, well, you know, in the Old Testament that he was saved. Never, nowhere. You gotta get to the New Testament. In Second Peter. And, and, my, and actually Brian Dangler actually questions whether he was saved. That's how far Brian Dangler has gone. Because they know a lot is a big problem from them in the works faith work system. That's why a lot isn't mentioned in, in most of these books. I haven't seen any book yet deal with the issue of Lot. They just use Lot as an example or reference basically as uh, a type of a New Testament Christian who can lose everything and still make it to the judgment seat of Christ and not have any rewards. But there you have a guy in the Old Testament who didn't give any proof of they were saved. Yet God said later on, yeah, he was saved. He was saved. And that's why God pulled him out of Sodom. Because Abraham paid, uh, prayed for him. And based on our prayer, he saved them. Yeah, notice how it's a physical salvation, people. Notice how it's a physical salvation that Lot had. God pulled him out of Sodom. So he was physically saved. He wasn't spiritually saved from that. He was physically saved from that. Everybody wants to say, everything in Romans 10, spiritual, spiritual. That's physical, so I'm saying physical salvation. So let me stop put this up. Purpose, again, you have to watch these guys. You have to watch the words they use, the weasel words. Leaving out a word, adding, you know, contradict themselves. Uh, you see the thing with uh, Joe Rogan, where he, he, he took CNN to task because the, uh, they were saying that he was taking a, a drug made for horses. And leave out the fact that it was also it's also prescribed for humans. And then they tried to Don Lemon tries to double down that. Well, we didn't lie because it is it is it is prescription for horses, and for humans. That's how they do it. They don't tell the whole truth. So we stop and put this up. Amen. Thank you.